Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. Seb Heslow here, and today we're gonna be overclocking this 1080 Ti for Ethereum mining. All right, so first of all, let's open up MSI Afterburner, which I got here. And the very first thing I always do is just set the fan to 80 while I'm experimenting and overclocking. Hit apply. Right, and I can hear the fan spinning up now, so that is all good. And the first thing you need to do on these 1080 Ti's is you need to either apply the memory tweak in your miner, if you can do that, and if not, then you need to look into if you can get the ETH enlargement pill working. But I've already uh, made a video on how to do the memory tweak. So just to keep this video short, uh, I've already applied memory tweak 6 in T-Rex, which is the maximum for this card. And it's all stable using that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to open and run the miner, which I am using T-Rex miner for this. And I'll do this with no overclocking settings yet because I uh, we just want to see what sort of the baseline for the card is and while that settles uh, I figured I would tell you about the three things that you need to keep in mind when overclocking So the very first thing is that overclocking is done at your own risk, you know, where you know Doing things to these cards that the manufacturer did not intend for us to do to them So just know that you're doing this at your own risk the second thing is, and this will be very true, extra true actually, in this video, and that is that even though I find some numbers here today that work for my card, doesn't mean at all that those numbers will work for your card, even if you have the exact same version of the exact same GPU, just due to the fact that each card is individual and unique. So. I, I say this in all of my overclocking videos, yet I still get comments saying your settings didn't work for me. Well, no, they won't. What you need to do is see the process of how I'm reaching these numbers and then follow that same process and make adjustments according to how your GPU reacts, okay? Please, guys, please. And then the third thing uh, that I want you to keep in mind is that when I overclock, I try to just get the highest stable hash rate that I can get out of these cards. Uh, it might be different for you. You might want to try and get the card to an uh, sort of as an efficient place as possible where you're getting like the most mega hash per watt. And if that's what you want to do, then you know, great, that's what you want to do. Uh, but for me, I overclock trying to get the highest stable hash rate that I can get. All right? Cool. So yeah, I'm gonna be completely honest and say that I've cheated. I've actually had this card for about a month and I've already overclocked it. So I know uh, what overclocks work best for this card already. And the thing is that with this specific version of the 1080 Ti, it's really strange. Um, it does not behave like other 1080 Ti's. It's just this specific sort of Asus one. It behaves strangely. Uh, but so what I'm going to do is I'm st still going to follow the same process that I would take for overclocking any GPU and then we'll just You know discuss as we go and hopefully you can follow along and find good numbers for you following that technique uh, But for me, it's going to be some really strange numbers in the end. So yeah, just uh, Just keep that in mind as we get going on this. Okay. Cheers. All right So the card seems to have settled at around just below 40 mega hash a second it's a 39.89 now so the first thing i do when overclocking is i take the memory clock and i just pull that all the way down to negative 502 hit apply and i do this just to see what happens because some gpus are just strange and they perform better when things are pulled down all the way so here we can immediately see what I mean with that this card behaves really strangely. So when I pulled the memory clock all the way down, first it dipped down to just above 39 mega hash. But now it's moving its way up again and it's currently at 41.36 mega hash a second. So let's, uh, let's just give it another minute or so and see where it settled. Okay, so it seems to have settled here at 41.37 mega hash a second. So 
you know, what would normally happen now is you'd be at a much lower hash rate because you pulled the memory clock all the way down. So if we pretend that that's what happened, uh, what I would do is just put the memory clock back to zero and I would apply that and I would just let the card settle back to where it was before uh, I pulled the memory clock down. All right, so we are back to 39.88 mega hash a second, uh, which is where we were before we started, uh, roughly at least. So what I would do now is I'd start to increase the memory clock instead. And so what I usually do is I take one big jump first, and then I take smaller incremental jumps until I either see the card crash or the thing become a bit unstable. So uh, I'm going to put uh, let's say 750 on the memory clock to start and apply that But of course you have to make a judgment call on how far you want that first big jump to be Okay, so what would normally happen in this case is that when you pulled your memory clock up You're usually seeing the hash rate increase however for me here it has drastically dropped. I'm at 32.72 mega a second now, but let's just pretend that it increased, right? So what I would do then is I'd go into my memory clock, since we haven't seen a crash yet, and I would increase it by maybe another 100, and hit apply. And I'd wait, and I'd see if that either crashes, or if it's stable, and then I'd increase it some more. And I would just, keep doing like very slight you know increments like that like maybe I do 50 at a time now after this and whenever I see the card either crash in the minor or the whole system crashes or you know uh, I get weird artifacts on the screen or whatever I would just take the memory clock uh, where, where it's at there and dial it back by maybe a hundred or so okay so that is how you overclock the memory clock and since for me the most like the highest hash rate I got was at negative 502 that is where I'm gonna put the memory clock but for you probably the sort of the highest hash rate would be probably somewhere in the positive on the memory clock all right but you have to test your way to see where you get the best result okay so I'm gonna pull my memory clock all the way down to negative 502 again. I'm gonna apply that and I'm gonna let the card stabilize where it was. All right, so my card has stabilized at around 41.36 mega hash. Uh, so now we just repeat the same process for the core clock. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just pull it all the way down to negative 400, apply that and see what happens. And yeah, so I'm definitely losing hash rate by doing that. I'm down at 30, 34 mega hash a second now. So I'm going to put the core clock back to zero, apply that, and just wait for it to settle back at that 41.3.4 ish where we were before. And then we're gonna start pushing the core clock up instead. All right, so we're back at 41.37 mega hash a second now. So. I'm going to start pushing the core clock up instead, but with the core clock, you need to be a bit more sort of careful because uh, you usually don't push as high number there. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by saying plus 100 and I'm going to apply that and let's see what that gives us. All right, so it seems we got a slight increase in hash rate by doing that. We're at 42.98 mega hash now, so just below 43. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one more sort of big jump on the core clock to 200. Oop, not 2,200, 200. And I'm gonna apply that and see what that gives us. All right, so card seems to have stabilized at around 45.3-ish mega hash. It's at 45.39 right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the core clock, which is at 200, and I'm gonna push it up even further to 250. Apply that and see what happens. All right, so my GPU just crashed here at 250 on the core clock. So what I'm going to do is, since I got a pretty decent hash rate at 200 core clock, I'm just gonna put it back 
to that and be happy with that. So I'm just going to let the miner settle back at that around 45-ish mega hash and then we'll tackle the power limit together. All right, so we're back at 45.31-ish mega hash now and let's start pulling the power limit down. So I got a power meter on the wall and currently for the whole system we're pulling about 242 watts. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lower my power limit to 90%. Apply that and see what happens. All right, so no real change to the amount of power we're pulling on the wall and no real change to our hash rate either. We're still at 45.35 mega hash. So let's go even lower. Let's go 80% power limit. Apply that. And immediately on the wall, we went down to around 225 watts and yeah seems like no real hit on our hash rate either we're still at 45.36 mega hash here so i'm going to do 70 percent power limit and see what that gives us so on the wall we're down to 205 watts now all right and we seem to have lost about two mega hash by doing that we're down to 43.44 now so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it back to 80% on the power limit and be happy there. So yeah, of course, what you want to do now is you want to just like leave the card on these settings for, you know, a day, two days, a week, just to make sure it's stable. And if it's, you know, keeps crashing here and there, or if you're seeing like a pretty high amount of invalid shares, then I would definitely suggest you lower your overclocks a little bit. And also, uh, if you have a version of this card, then please leave your overclocking settings that you find in the comments below. And I figured we could build sort of like a little database of overclocking settings for 1080 Ti's down there. But yeah, if this video was helpful to you, then please give it one of these. I'd really appreciate it. And what you gotta do now is you gotta click on one of the videos on the screen, because this video is over. You can also click on the picture of my face to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. But yeah, go click on that next video, and I'll see you there. Goodbye. Bye-bye.